Well, hello, YouTubers. It's Tyler here again, and I have another color grading tutorial for you. And um, in this one, I'm going to go into the Luma Curve, and we're going to use a secondary color correction to boost your camera's dynamic range from what it kind of processes in there. We can only do it so much, but you can bring in a couple more stops to get the most out of your image. And I'm going to go over these clips real quick. And this first clip is the finished color graded clip. And I've adjusted the clouds, brought the dark sum, kind of boosted the colors a little bit. And you can see the before and after, or actually the after and before. And you can see the difference. This clip could have stood on its own, but there's always room for improvement. This next one is basically the same technique, but I popped in a three-way color correction in there to grade the image. And this last one, the only thing I did was just boost the darks to bring the subject out a little bit because he was kind of dark. So let's get down to it. Okay, well, the two clips we're going to edit, this one was just an example. Uh, we're not actually going to grade this one because, I mean, you can see right here where we can actually bring in more detail in the clouds and all that, but it's not really the best example because the camera did a pretty good image on its own. So we're going to go right here to this one, and we're going to see the before, and you see the before look has that very standard camcorder look, and we'll see the after where it's been graded, it's been colored, and there's more detail in the clouds. The dark's been lifted a little bit, and it has that pop that you want in those shots. So we'll start with that one at first. So let me go ahead and just get rid of this adjustment layer. This is it before and after. And we're going to start with this guy first. So first, I'm going to drop in a Luma Curve. I'm going to go into the color correction, go to a Luma Curve, and oops. Oh, that was the correct area. Let me, let me get rid of this. There we go. All right, we have a Luma Curve in there. So let's drop down to the secondary color correction. And what I want to first do, and this is the whole premise behind color grading and all this fancy stuff that people do. You don't really need any of those super fancy plugins. You know, well, I do know that... Uh, after Effects, it's a little more difficult to do color grading, so those plugins do help. But Premiere has a whole suite of awesome tools that you can really get down to nitty-gritty your project. So I'm going to show the mask, and I'm going to skip the hue and saturation. I have another tutorial that shows how that works. And we're just going to go and mess with the Luma. So we'll pull this down. You see now we're just starting to affect the sky. So let's feather it out just a little bit. We've got some of the track in there. We don't want that. We just want to isolate the sky, so let's back this up a little more, and that's looking pretty good, but let's go ahead and soften it up so we get a nice graduation of the colors. And you don't always have to soften it up. That's only for issues that you're going to have with getting other parts of your image, because unfortunately, Premiere doesn't have very great masks, and if you're listening Adobe, I really think that Premiere needs a spline mask tool like an After Effects that would really help it out in the editing side on a nonlinear editor. With that said, let's go ahead and get down to it. So we got our mask set up. That's how we want it. So let's go ahead and turn off show mask. And we just want to bring some more detail in the sky right here. Let's bring this down so it's a little bigger. Let's get the most out of it. And it's going to pull the lights down here on our curve. And you can see now, let's bring this up a little bit that if we go to before and after, we're starting to get some more detail in here. So let me zoom in real quick. And I'll show you why I feathered this mask out. So let's go down here. And I'm going to turn off the soften. And actually, that's working pretty good. But if you look right in here, you can get these harsh edges in between your mask. So I'm going to feather it a little bit, soften it, should I say. And you can see how it kind of has a more graduated pull on that as opposed to that. Which either way it would work, but uh, I'm going to feather it just to be safe. So we got our before and after, and, and we're effectively just isolating the sky. Getting a little bit of the track right here, but that's no biggie. Alrighty, so that's looking good. So let's go ahead and back up to the beginning. Right here. Let's go back to fit, and I want to see in the darks here a little more, see more of the willy bars, and just kind of bring out some more detail and help boost the uh, dynamic range of this image. So I'm going to minimize this, 
and drop another luma curve into the mix. And we're going to do the exact same thing, but we are going to isolate just the dark section. Let's go ahead and show mask. And so now we're just selecting the darks of the image. And uh, I don't think I need to feather this because it's a nice graduated gradient and nothing seems to be really jittering. So that looks good. So I'll undo that. It's going to back up some more to the, oops, right here to the clip. And I'm going to pull up the dark zone. I'm going to hit tilde key so I can really get in here. Which is right beneath your escape key. And I'm going to really pull the darks up some. And that's probably too much. Let's see. Let's go to 100. Yeah, it's starting to look a little desaturated there. Kind of washed out. So let's go back in here. I usually have it full screen on a monitor. So I'm just guessing here. It's really hard to get into these tools precisely when they're so small. So let's try that. And let's see before and after. See, now we're seeing a little more detail in there. And that's kind of how you want to do it. Because all these film cameras, it really gives film cameras a nice film look. Is number one, the bokeh. Number two, they have a really, really, really nice dynamic range. So they get the most detail how your eyes see. And this is the XA10. It's a good camera. It doesn't have the bokeh, but it has a pretty decent dynamic range. And you can see how already we're starting to get a better look out of the image. So let's go back to fit. And now that I have everything pretty much, you know, the sky, we see the sky a little more. We get to see more of the shadows. So now I'm going to drop in another Luma curve and do what basically people would do. Just drop a Luma curve and not isolate things and just kind of work at it. So now we can go ahead and since we got as much detail as we can before it starts getting the funny uh, artifacts in there, we can now edit a little more. So we can probably pull a little more down the sky. See how the sky is coming in some more. Let's lift the darks just a little bit. And let's bring up right around here. And we'll kind of bring in some more of the midtones. Let's bring it down a little bit actually. That's the track. And you can see how we brought in just a little more detail in the image. And you want to get right to the point where it's not blowing out anything. Everything nice and smooth. That's just the way I like it. But of course, everyone has their own particular style, their own particular liking image. And this is basically to show you the tools to get the most out of your image. And um, I don't like to use the curves and all that to get more contrast in there. I have another technique that I use where I'm going to use a unsharpened mask. Do not know why they call it an unsharpened mask. It's really sharpening it. They should call it a sharpened mask. But that's just what it's called. Now I'm going to make a really big radius of like 60 pixels or so. And you can see already how that is really giving it a lot more contrast. But we're not losing that much detail in the shadows. We're keeping them. But we're not, it has a nice contrasty look that kind of how film looks. So it kind of pops on you. We're going to bring this down just a little bit. I think 50 is too much. Because it'll start to give a little glow around the edges, kind of HDR look. So let's boom, boom. And that's not bad. You know, we're looking pretty good. And now let's get into the fun part where we get to grade our image and give it the color we want. And that pretty much works the same way as a Luma curve. I said it's going to be pushing the tonal ranges in your image. Tonal, tonal. Tone mapping, I should say. So we'll go to three-way color correction. You see right here? Tonal range definition. And these are the guys that I don't really see too many people use too much on YouTube. They just kind of mess with this. And they leave this how it is, which that's just a base setting that you know Premiere gives you. Kind of a middle ground. And what it is... This guy is going to be adjusting this section of the image. And the shadows, see the highlights, highlights. And you see the dark here and the light here. Hence, shadows and darks. Char sorry, shadows and lights. So the shadows affect this. Your mid-range will affect everything in between here. Very simple. Once you know how it works. So first, what I like to do, I like to kind of boost it way out of proportion and see exactly what my tonal range is in the highlights. And you can see this is it right here. And I don't want it to be too 
crazy, you know, uh, sharp. So I'm going to do, 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 feather it out some. And that's where this comes in handy, this little feather tool. Give it a little more feather. Turn it back some. A little more feather. And now we're getting a nice graduated, you know, gradient from the lights to the midtones. And that way you won't get those harsh edges that you see a lot when you don't properly adjust this guy right here. So let's go ahead and bring this back. I want the sky to be nice and orange. Kind of like, you know, the sun's going down. And you see now we have a nice orange sky. Stop saving. A nice orange sky. And then I'm going to go to the darks and get, make it look a little more blue. Kind of the, uh, the Instagram look is probably one of those filters that are on there. I'm not sure which one it is, but I've seen it a lot. So I'm going to do that. And we're going to see what all is going to be very blue. And see this, how it's really sharp? We want to make that a little more feathered out there, I should say. Feather is a good word. See, it's feathering it out some more. And now we're just grabbing more of the blues. Sorry, the darks. And they're all the darks going to be blue. So we're going to back this off some because that's way too blue. And let's see how that looks. Too much here. I'm going to hit the tilde key and back it off a little bit to get more in there. Let's look at it now. Hmm. Maybe too much. Let's do it again. And basically I'm hitting the tilde key, which is underneath the escape key on a, on a PC. I'm pretty sure it's the same on a Mac. Whatever window you're in, it'll make it full screen like this. Pretty useful. Let's just back it off a little bit more. And looking kind of cool. We'll kind of make it look artistic for this just to demonstrate how you can really get into your 3 uh, bay color grading in Premiere and do a lot of cool things. And not only that, but you can stack up your 3 bay color grading in there use multiple three-way um, color grades and use secondary color correction like up in your luma curve to really color parts of the image that you really want to make drastically different or just get in there and fine-tune it works really great and it works just as good as I think most of those like DaVinci and all that other stuff I mean DaVinci is pretty damn awesome but this is pretty darn good too and it comes in Premiere and I really like it you know it's it's a uh, it's nice once you know how to use the tools, you know, it's not as straightforward as DaVinci and other ones, but it's pretty darn good. So let's check it out. Before and after. Yeah, so I'm going to do this real quick. Let's go ahead and I'm going to select them all in order. I'm going to cut them out. And there's right off the camera. And paste them in there. And then there's our graded look which is kind of cool. I mean, you can change it up to your heart's content. Let's go ahead and make it look a little more saturated, a little more happy. So we're going down to the saturation here. And we are going to mess with, so you have the uh, midtones, shadows, and master and the highlights. So we can boost the saturation up here. See, that's really boosted now, which is for way too much. So let's kind of bring that down. And midtones. So you can effectively do all that, but the shadows aren't really going to be touched too much. And that's kind of a cool look, you know. Do a little something like that. And it's kind of boosting. Let's bring up everything a little bit. This is the master, which will kind of boost everything. And so now let's see how that changed it. Boom, 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 boom. So you can really get a nice look to um, your video. And that's kind of the whole premise behind color grading color correction, whatever you want to do, does a nice look for you. Now this last one is Sean Friendly, and my subject's a little too dark. The lights are too far back, and he was too dark in the image. So if I get rid of it, you can see how we're not seeing too much detail in our subject. And I like everything else in the image. You know, I, I think it all looks nice. I really don't need to sharpen it. That's what, one thing I like about the XA10. It's a very sharp camera. So let's... Uh, Go into the Luma Curve and hey, let me select it. And let's pop it in there. And go to secondary color correction. Go to the Luma. Show the mask. And this is how we can just isolate the darks and bring your subject 
up without affecting the other parts of the image. And this is what makes this very powerful. See, I'm now just affecting the darks. And you see, don't see much detail in our subject. And now we see a lot more detail in our subject. Well, that's pretty much my tutorial for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. And don't forget to subscribe. If you have any more tutorials you'd like to see or anything else you want to know, post your comments down below. And if I get enough of them, I will make another tutorial for you guys. Until next time, happy grading and peace out.